Well, hello, welcome back everybody. This is our video solution to problem four from quiz one, fall 2023, math 307 at Cal State Fullerton. In this problem, we're gonna be given two subsets of a vector space, particularly R3, and we wanna determine uh, whether each one of them is a subspace of R3. So uh, let's see, in fact, the problem is really nice because it tells us, for example, that R3 is a vector space with the usual component-wise addition and scalar multiplication. And uh, one of these two subsets that are given is actually going to be a subspace and the other is not, so that's really nice. Uh, so let's see if we can figure it out. Now, uh, maybe it's handy, uh, just in case you're not familiar, right, to write down this usual component-wise addition and scalar multiplication. So this is very standard. So, um, for example, let's say I have some A, B, C in R3, as well as a D, E, F. Okay, so these are two different elements of R3, and I want to add them together. I just do it component-wise. So this will be A plus D, B plus E, C plus F. And if I also know that I have some scalar, say alpha in R, and I multiply alpha by A, B, C, this will just be alpha A, alpha B, alpha C. Okay, so that is just the background knowledge that you need to have. And uh, that's, well, at least for understanding what it is we're even talking about as a vector space. Now, for showing that something is a subspace, remember we have a subspace criteria, right, which requires us to look at three things. So uh, to show, say, some subset U of a vector space V is a subspace, we show three things. So first, we show that zero, right? So this is the additive identity of the vector space V. We show that it is also in the, the proposed subspace. We also need to show closure under addition, right? This means that if U and W are in U, then U plus W is in U. So this is what we say is, right? That U is closed under addition. And then finally, we need to show that if U is in U and C is in the field, right? In this case, the field is just R, then C times U is also in U. And this is what we say closed under the scalar operation, right? Or scalar multiplication. All right, so we have these three things. So let's look at the first subset. And maybe we'll give it a name. How about we'll call it U1 since it's the first one. Uh, let's see. Well, I'd like to know, uh, is zero in this set? Well, this is given in set builder notation. So let's just practice uh, converting this. This says we're going to look at the set of all elements of the form x, y, z in R3, right? So x, y, and z have to be real numbers such that if I multiply those three components, x, y, and z together, and multiply by three, I get zero. Now, one of the things I told you in class is that whenever you have a set given in this sort of way, you're given tuples, and then there's some sort of expression here that's set equal to zero, if it's not written in the form that you see in part b, right, where you have a linear combination of the x, y, and z, meaning you've multiplied each x, y, and z by some number and then added or subtracted them from each other, and then you set it equal to some, uh, actually to zero itself, uh, then you're probably not going to get a subspace, all right? So if you start multiplying, right, dividing, whatever, you're unlikely to have a subspace. So we should expect that this is not going to give us a subspace. But, okay, we got a test. So first, is zero in U1? Well, what is the zero element of V? All right, well, the zero element in V is equal to zero, zero, zero. Because if I add, say, A, B, C to zero, 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 I will get A, B, C. So this is my additive identity. All right, is this in U1? Well, the way you test the condition to be in U1 is you have to multiply the components together and multiply by three. And then you check and see if you get zero. 
If you do, you're in U1. If you don't, you're not. Well, in this case, 3 times 0 times 0 times 0, well, that's definitely equal to 0. And hence, this 0 element is in U1. All right, well, we're one third of the way to actually showing it is a subspace. All right, well, let's now check whether or not U1 is closed under addition. So the way we do this is I'm going to check two elements in U1. So I need to let there be two elements in U1. So let's see, how about we'll let A, B, C, and D, E, F be in U1. And now I need to look at their sum and determine if it's in U1 or not. All right? Well, the fact that they're in U1 individually, that does tell me something. Okay. The fact that ABC is in U1 tells me that 3ABC is equal to 0. And the fact that DEF is in U1 tells me that 3DEF is equal to 0. Hmm. Well, what do we need to actually know? Well, we have to look at ABC plus DEF. Now this is equal to A plus D b plus e, c plus f, just as we did up here on the right. Okay, and to tell whether or not this is in u1, I have to multiply all of these together, multiply then by 3, and check to see if I get 0. So let's check. 3 times a plus d times b plus e times c plus f. Is this equal to 0? Well, actually, before I answer that, let me just mention one little thing that students tend to do. Uh, you have this triple, and you know you want this condition to hold, and then students like to write an equality here. They say, oh, A plus D, B plus E, C plus F equals three times, blah, blah, blah. And this is just total nonsense, okay? This is a triple of real numbers, three times this product. Th this is just a single real number when you evaluate it, right? There's no triple. It's not an element of R3. Okay, so we have to be careful. Don't say two things that are uh, in you know, different sets right, are equal to each other. Okay, so uh, I multiply these all together. Now, I know when I multiply this out, I'm going to get a lot of different terms. All right? So for starters, though, I am going to get 3a times b times c. I'm also going to get 3d times e times f. But there's going to be more. For example, I'm going to get 3a times b times f. And I'm going to get 3a uh, times c times f. And, well, there's a lot of stuff. Ooh, so many things. Now, I know that the first two are equal to 0. But I'm not really convinced that all the rest are going to give me 0. And at this point, that I decide, you know what, maybe it sh I should be looking for a counterexample, right? Maybe this is not going to be a subspace, and I need to just add a couple things together that aren't, it's not going to work out for. Now, ultimately, you know, if I'm going to multiply a bunch of stuff together and I get zero, and they're just real numbers, then one of them has to be zero. So actually, if I want to find a counterexample, then my goal should be write down some triple where I know none of the numbers are zero. So for example, I could do one, 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 right? None of those are zero. And now I just need to write it as a sum of two vectors where each one of them has at least one zero in it. So for example, I could do one, zero, zero, plus zero, one, one. Now I know that 3 times 1 times 0 times 0 equals 0, and 3 times 0 times 1 times 1 equals 0, which tells me that 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 1 are in U1, while their sum, 1, 1, 1, right? So that's 1, 0, 0 plus 0, 1, 1 is not in U1. Okay, actually, if we're being really good, I write this on the other side, right? Because it's very obvious that 1, 1, 1 is not in U1. All right, but this shows me now, this implies U1 is not closed under addition. And therefore, U1 
is not a subspace. All right, so U1's not a subspace. Whew, I sure hope U2 is, right? What's U2? Well, that's the other one here. Okay, uh, so maybe we'll copy that down below. So U2, this is equal to all X, Y, Z in C3. Such, did we say C there? Nope, R3. Eh, I guess I really want to do complex numbers. Okay, such that 5X minus 3Y plus 4Z is equal to 0. Now this is in the right form, right? I've taken a linear combination of X, Y, and Z, and it's homogeneous, right? It's equal to 0. Okay, but let's, let's do the, the work. We'll check it. So first we need to see if 0, right, which again is 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, is in U2. Okay, but I know that 5 times 0 minus 3 times 0 plus 4 times 0, well, that definitely equals 0. And so that tells me that 0, 0, 0 is in U2. Notice, by the way, I'm not starting by writing 0, 0, 0 is in U2 and implying something from that. Okay, this is another common mistake people are going to make on these. They're going to start from the conclusion and then write, oh, the conclusion implies 5 times 0 minus 3 times 0 plus 4 times 0 equals 0. No, 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 no. It's the other way around, right? This implies that 0, 0, 0 is in U2. All right, next we need closure under addition. So I'm going to choose two elements from U2. So we'll do what we did before. We'll let A, B, C, and D, E, F be in U2. Well, that tells me that 5A minus 3B plus 4C is equal to 0, as well as 5D minus 3E plus 4F is equal to 0. Now we make a little observation. If I add these expressions together, I get 5 times A plus D minus 3 times B plus E plus 4 times C plus F will also equal 0. And that tells me now that A plus D comma B plus E comma C plus F is an element of U2. But this element, which is now an element of U2, is exactly A, B, C plus D, E, F. Therefore, the sum of two elements of U2 is again an element of U2. All right, well, one more condition to check, and that is that U2 is closed under scalar multiplication. So let's let alpha be some real number. And I'm going to multiply alpha by A, B, C. And I want that to, well, be an element of U2, right? Is this an element of U2? Okay, well, we know, again, because this A, B, C is in U2, that 5A minus 3B plus 4C equals 0. Let's copy that again. And if I multiply this expression by alpha, then I get that 5 alpha A minus 3 alpha B plus 4 alpha C is equal to 0. But this here tells me that alpha A comma alpha B comma alpha C is an element of U2. But this expression is exactly equal to alpha times A comma B comma C. All right. Therefore, U2 is closed, that's a 2, is closed under scalar multiplication. And putting all these things together, we get that U2 is a subspace of V. And there we go. We finished the argument. All right, so this takes some practice, but it's a very well-defined process, okay? That's the good news. And you practice it, you will absolutely be able to get this. All right, we will see you all next time.